As the primary victory of moderate Chantel Brown on 3 August in the 11th Congressional District of Ohio was celebrated by corporatist Democrats, a propaganda piece by Ben Jacobs in the Intelligencer section of New York Magazine capped the smear campaign against progressive candidate Nina Turner, who placed a close second of 13. In the photo New York Magazine includes, Turner seems ashamed in what we are apparently to believe was her concession speech, but oh no, the picture was taken amid the campaign. Jacobs begins, Nina Turner compared voting for Joe Biden last year to eating a quote, bowl of shit, unquote. Incorrect. Full data coming on screen. Nina Turner, a co-chair of the Sanders campaign, told me she has no appetite for the choice she faces. Quote, it's like saying to somebody, you have a bowl of shit in front of you, and all you've got to do is eat half of it instead of the whole thing. It's still shit. Unquote. Peter Nicholas for The Atlantic Magazine, 27 July 2020. When quoted accurately and in context, the analogy Turner used clearly meant she deemed Biden to be half as bad as Trump was. For any believer in honesty, peace, reproductive freedom, racial equality, civil liberties, and economic justice, to have at least as low an opinion of Biden as Turner does makes perfect sense. Jacobs writes, the defeat of Turner should be no surprise. After the race became about her disdain for the Democratic establishment. Her disdain? Jacobs neglects to mention the disdain the Democratic establishment had shown toward Turner for years. Let's consider a few examples. Barney Frank, former congressman from Massachusetts, Hillary Clinton supporter. Here, Frank is 10 months into his tenure on the board of Signature Bank, which had received $120 million in the bailout on which Clinton voted yay and Sanders voted nay. MSNBC discloses none of that. And Nina Turner, former Ohio state senator and a Bernie Sanders supporter. Barney Frank, I want to start with you. Overwhelmingly, the Congressional Black Caucus, we believe she has been and will be a more effective change agent. But, and right, tell gonna, me, and gonna, almost we're gonna justify... Gonna a, we're going to squeeze in a quick Congress, break here. The Black Caucus, in 2008, most members did not support then-Senator Obama. The same folks now ride the coattails of President Obama. Let's talk about what can be accomplished and what Senator Bernie Sanders has accomplished. Let's talk about, again, that veterans bill that he worked hand-in-hand -hand with Senator John McCain. That was the product of negotiations with Senator Sanders. I'm one of the first to feel the burn. He is refusing to settle for incremental progress. When people are poor, when they are down and out, when they need help, when they need uplift, they want somebody that is not going to equivocate. They want a champion. Head to head, Senator Bernie Sanders beats every Republican, leaps and bounds ahead of Secretary Clinton. And Ed says Goldman Sachs wasn't sufficiently punished. And in effect, no wonder people get speaking fees from Goldman Sachs. That's an attack on the Obama administration. And while we're at it, I do want to respond how, how disappointed it's I am. It's not an attack on the Obama administration. I'm sorry. It would why be, you, I'm sorry. Please don't interrupt me. Bring up, Lawrence, Listen, may I continue? Clint, I mean, President Lawrence, Obama what are the rules? is not running okay. with Lawrence, the what are the, the United States of America again. He's not Lawrence, running. Lawrence, what are the rules here? All right, let, let, let me go, say, go ahead, I, if you attack the people who did not bring charges against Goldman Sachs or any other or didn't do them sufficiently, you're attacking the Obama administration. I was very sorry to hear her denigrate the Congressional Black Caucus, and frankly, I'm troubled by I this. I did not denigrate to me like the somebody, Congressional Black please, Caucus. Please, you just, I'm sorry, please, I, Lawrence, what are the rules about the interruptions? I heard you would denigrate the Black Caucus. You said, oh, they were just riding the coattails. I hope Senator Sanders doesn't involve in a Ralph Nader. Barney Frank talks fast. Sometimes he talks faster than his mind operates. <laughs> and his memory recalls. Don't forget. What happened in 2000? In 2000, Nader did not seek the Democratic presidential nomination. He was the presidential nominee of the Green Party. In contrast, when Sanders became a Democratic presidential candidate in 2015, he made this pledge, which he would keep. If you lose in this nomination fight, will you support the Democratic nominee? Yes. Also in 2000, George W. Bush stole the critical electoral votes of Florida. On 6 January 2001, numerous members of the Congressional Black Caucus objected to certification of those votes.
but needed the signature of any senator in order to allow consideration of the facts surrounding the slate of electors from Florida. Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden were in the Senate. No senator signed, though. I, I in no way I denigrated. Just, all right, all right. I'm going to say good night. Nina Turner was reportedly scheduled to participate in the nomination process of Sanders before the roll call vote. She was kicked off the Democratic National Convention program by the Clinton campaign. It was unfortunate, especially on a night where African-American women were all on that stage and we're talking about giving voice to women. As Matthew Bryan Cohen brilliantly parodied in McSweeney's, corporate Democrats do like to amplify voices from marginalized groups so long as those voices are not progressive. Indeed, I suspect the contempt Clinton and many of her allies harbor for Turner began because her prominence on Sanders' campaign undermined the narrative that was employed by Clintonites, especially in media, to defame Sanders' supporters as racist, white, sexist men. Nina Turner, your problem. Clears. Your man is a socialist. Is in the spirit of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who warned about white moderates. Nina referenced Dr. Martin Luther King before saying he said from the Birmingham jail, we should be concerned about white moderates. That's actually not what King said. He said he we should be that. worried about the silence about Dr. Martin of Luther King white moderates. Jr. Incorrect. Full data coming on screen. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace which is the absence of tension to a positive peace which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. I had hoped the white moderate would understand law and order exist to establish justice and, when they fail in this purpose, they become the dangerously structured dams that block the flow of social progress. I had hoped the white moderate would understand the present tension in the South is a necessary phase of the transition from an obnoxious negative peace, in which the Negro passively accepted his unjust plight, to a substantive and positive peace, in which all men will respect the dignity and worth of human personality. Actually, we who engage in nonviolent direct action are not the creators of tension. We merely bring to the surface the hidden tension, like a boil that can never be cured so long as it is covered up but must be opened, with all its ugliness, to the natural medicines of air and light, injustice must be exposed, with all the tension its exposure creates, to the light of human conscience and the air of national opinion before it can be cured. Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 16 April 1963. We have in Joe Biden, a man who is not silent. I do not believe Strom Thurmond at his core was a racist. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. To fully, I'm not joking. The first sort of mainstream African American who is articulate and bright and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, that's a story. He has a long record. And many, many votes that in today's world feel like the wrong thing were the wrong thing. And he has discussed that over and over again. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said the bigger threat is not necessarily the KKK member, but more the white moderate that is more comfortable you with know keeping what? things don't, the same don't or use, pretending like there is no Don't use Martin Luther King against than, Joe than Biden. To deal. You, you don't first have all, that. Nobody, you don't all, have that standing. First of all, I'm Hillary, sorry. You, you don't. don't. Don't tell me what kind of standing you, I have you, as a black woman in America. How dare you? You have a lot of standing as a black woman in America. You don't have the standing to attack Joe Biden using Martin Luther King's words. I, I didn't attack anybody. You're taking it. You're taking it that way. Listen, don't dip into what I have to say about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. How dare you, oh, as no, a no, white no. woman, I'm not sit up here that. and try to tell me? Yeah, that no, is not no, what I said. To tell me don't what you do I'm, that. Nina, what I'm supposed Hillary, to feel and what I'm doing right I'm now. I'm out of time on this. That's but something. Look, 
Chris, I didn't jump in on her, Nina, though. Well, and then she wants to jump in on me. Okay, and first of all, it's not nobody jumping in on anybody. Incorrect. Jacobs continues. Turner lost a special primary in Cleveland on Tuesday. Incorrect. Among Clevelanders in the district, Turner prevailed by 10 percentage points. Brown was put over the top by residents of high-income suburbs. Jacobs asserts Representative James Clyburn of South Carolina was lured into the race after rapper Michael Killer Mike Render at a Turner campaign event described him as, quote, incredibly stupid, unquote, to endorse Biden for the presidential nomination last year. Incorrect. In reality, Render described as stupid the decision by Clyburn to endorse Biden without any concession from the ex-vice president that would improve the material conditions of any workers. I would agree with Render if Clyburn seemed to me to prioritize the good of his constituents. However, in effect, he is the congressman from the pharmaceutical industry. Case in point, the first reason the New York Times reported Clyburn gave for his endorsement of Brown was his opposition to Medicare for All. Jacobs concludes, The results Tuesday showed the most popular figures in their respective parties still have coattails. Incorrect. Biden never had coattails. Contrary to what his supporters in the primaries last year said would happen were he nominated, the Democratic Party in November suffered a net loss of 12 seats in the House of Representatives. After the fact, the left was blamed for it by many of Biden's ideological ilk. However, of the 15 seats that were flipped from Democratic to Republican, Incumbents were ousted from 13, and of those incumbents, 12 were members of the so-called New Democrat Coalition and or the Blue Dog Coalition, both of which are center-right. If you're a um, guard on the Green Bay Packers, you can't play the piano.